The climate crisis and its devastating effects are everywhere and undeniable. Communities least responsible are most affected. These are just a few stories from the front line of humanity's greatest threat. I grew up seeing the impact of the typhoons and the climate crisis. I grew up in a place that wasn't very urbanized. There was lots of huge trees. Um, houses were far apart. We'd have to listen to a battery-powered radio to listen if our city we had to evacuate. I would have to do my homework by the candlelight because there would be no electricity because of the raging typhoon outside. This is just something that I really grew up with. And this is already a story of privilege. Because last year, in the span of three weeks, we had four typhoons. And all of these are supposedly once-in-a-lifetime typhoons, like the strength of them. They're being described as once-in-a-lifetime typhoons. But I have how many have I experienced? And I'm not even done with my life, I hope. Sometimes I would wake up in the middle of the night and the floods have entered my room and I'd have to scoop it out. The city where our relatives were floods sometimes reached um, 12 meters or 40 feet high, so second to third floors of buildings. We are so vulnerable to the climate crisis, but we are also fighting back so hard. We have no choice but to fight back. This is the planet that we're living on, that we're fighting for. I have this privilege, quote unquote, to choose to become an activist while there are people who are forced into it almost because the consequences are worse. And in a way, we don't have a choice either because the climate crisis and the climate emergency is here and we've seen that so clearly in the Philippines especially. And that was when I really decided to actively pursue environmental activism on a systemic change level. Actually, by the time it was raining, it had to be the dry season. But then now that it has to be a wet season, it's dry. We had a plantation back then in the village, and when all this started happening, we lost our uh, we lost our crops. We started losing our yields. So you find that you can't really sell any food because you also need food to survive. And then money went on reducing. There's a time when my dad couldn't afford to pay my tuition fees because we could no longer sell food. The yields were really very bad and also we needed food to sustain ourselves. So I had to sit down for three months at home because school here is paid for, like you have to pay tuition fees in order to attain education. Since my dad couldn't afford, I couldn't go to school. And this is the case with very many children, very many. It breaks my heart because the same people that are suffering the same crisis are the same people who don't really know about it. And then that is how my activism started. Creating awareness in the local, local communities helps them understand what is going on, what climate change really is, and what they can do, because it affects them the most. Rosa, you, I, and the rest of us only met recently, but it feels like it has been so much longer. Before camp, we had all been through the same difficulties for the last year because of the COVID crisis. We felt cut off from the world. 
At camp, we could finally be regular teenagers again. No masks, talking, hugging and being carefree. We talked about how we, teenagers, were going to make the world a better place. This was supposed to be our summer, Rosa. Our summer of freedom. The water took you, Rosa. It happened so quickly. I still don't understand it. How could this happen to you, to us? The small, harmless dream had turned into a monster. And all I could think of was getting you out. I ran next to you and I jumped in. I held you while the monster was raging around us and pulling us along with it. We had to get out. This isn't a movie and I'm not a superhero. I'm just a 14 year old boy who tried his best. I'm sorry Rosa, I wish it wasn't true. I will never forget you Rosa, none of us will.